pushing back on the enemy. We are pushing back on depression. We are, come on, pushing back on anxiety. We are pushing back on fear. Why is it the world never has to apologize for shouting, but we always feel the need for to apologize for being loud? Why is it the world never has to apologize over infiltrating us with darkness, but we always have to apologize for doing deliverance? Like, I don't understand. The world doesn't apologize for putting demons into people, but we have to apologize that we're casting demons out of people. The last three services, we're going strong today. People have been screaming getting delivered at this altar. Acts chapter 8 says that they were screaming as demons left them, and there was great joy in that city. And as people are getting delivered and screaming, there are other people sitting back judging, getting offended, and getting upset. Why is it we are so far in America from what happened in the Bible every time God begins to do supernatural things? We're so carnal that we're scared. We should not be scared of seeing miracles. We should not be scared of driving out demons. I wish, come on, help me. I wish I had somebody in this place that says, I am unashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of speaking in tongues. I'm not ashamed of prophecy. I'm not ashamed of casting out devils. I'm not ashamed of words of knowledge and words of wisdom and prophesying. Why are we ashamed of doing the supernatural work? The God that we serve is a supernatural God. And I'm I'm so frustrated that the devil is flexing and has his hands around the throat of my generation. Meanwhile, we are soft in the church. Devil enough is enough. I came to let every principality know that your reign of terror is over, that your time is over. We are here to torment the works of darkness. We have people in this room demonized bound, controlled, and bondage at war with God to the plans of the enemy. And meanwhile, we're over here arguing about stuff that's pointless and trivial. I came to tell you that there is spiritual power in Acts chapter 1. Ye shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be a witness. I wonder if there's anybody hungry for the power of the Holy Ghost. I wonder if there's any but desperate, saying, God, I don't want to warm a chair. I don't want church as usual. I want the power. The Holy Spirit takes you to another dimension. In the natural realm, if somebody's sick in body, all you can do is prescribe them a pill. All you can do is get them to therapy. All you can do is give them some medicine. In the supernatural realm, we have transcended. We are not normal, average people that are grasshoppers. We have the spirit. The Bible says this, that the same spirit that raised Christ is living in you. 2 Corinthians 4.18 says our eyes are not on what we see, but on the unseen realm. For what is unseen is eternal. what is seen is temporary. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 3 verse 8 that Jesus was made manifest on the earth that he might destroy the works of darkness. Paul said do not be ignorant of Satan's devices lest he has an advantage over you. The devil has a plan for this generation but God's plan is far greater. Jesus said I've given you all power over every plan of the devil. You be oh, I wish I was preaching to somebody. You've been given all power and all authority. That means I don't have to have the spirit of suicide. Talk to me. But I could tell that spirit of suicide. You must go in Jesus. In the natural, there's nothing I can do about sickness. 
in the spiritual, ye shall lay hands on the sick and they will recover. You have the power to lay your hands on a sick person in Jesus' name. The disciples in the book of Luke chapter 10, they came to Jesus and said one of the most mind-boggling statements. They said, even the demons obey us in your name. There is supernatural authority. See, I'm not coming today in my name. Most people don't realize preaching is exhausting because I'm not just preaching to you, but the Bible says we're making known the good news to powers and principalities. I am preaching to invisible forces in the unseen realm that have held you down for years, and I'm coming like Moses and letting every demonic pharaoh know, let my people go in Jesus' name. Let my family go. Let my marriage go. You better tell the devil, let my mind go. Tormented, tormented all day in my mind. Thoughts of suicide, thoughts of depression, anxious, anxious, fearful, all these things. And it can't be this way that I come to church and nothing changes. It can't be that we don't confront these things. It can't be that everybody around me is sick in body and dying and demonized. And my friends and family are going to hell. Friend, do you know hell prays? Hell has a prayer request. Jesus said there was a man in hell, Lazarus, and he cried out, saying, tell my brothers about this place. Do you know hell prays, warn your friends and family? But people in hell want you to preach. They want you to proclaim this gospel. You've been given the power of God and the responsibility to declare the gospel. You have the good news. What is the good news? I was at war with God, and now I'm at peace with God. The Bible says... The world is at war with God. Every friend and family that's not saved, they are at war. They are God's enemy, the Bible says. That we have alienated ourselves, we've made ourselves enemy to God. And the only way around that was through the shed blood of Jesus. Remember in the Old Testament, God was known, the Father God was known by names, Al Shaddai, uh, what other names? Um, Al Sidkenu and Jehovah Jireh and Jehovah Rapha and Jehovah Sidkenu. All these name, 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 name. And then the New Testament comes, we don't see the names anymore because no longer would it be a word that reveals who God the Father was. It would be a person named Jesus. Jesus said that me and the Father are one. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. John 17, Jesus prays. He said, Lord, I've made you manifest to them. Now let them go and make you known to the people. Jesus said, it's better that I leave, that I send the Holy Spirit, for the Holy Spirit is going to come and make you my ambassador. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18 says that you've been given the ministry of reconciliation as if God himself were speaking through you, calling people back to him. Every one of us have been called to reconcile people back to the Father. Every one of us have been called as God's ambassador to lay hands on the sick, to drive out demons, and to threaten hell's gates. But why are we not doing these things? Because there are invisible forces at work stopping the church. There are invisible forces, specifically today I'll talk about a invisible spirit, a person without a body. Ephesians chapter 6 says we are in a battle, and our battle is not against flesh and blood. you got to get mad today that there are billboards out here in our cities that literally say this, if you want to murder your child, come to California. There are billboards now saying if you want an abortion, come to California, and our governor says we will pay out of taxpayers, that's my money, y'all, out of taxpayers' dollars. We will pay for you to fly in here so that we can get clams and literally crush your child. The most beautiful thing in the world is a mother giving birth to a child. And the devil says, I'm going to kill that baby in the mother's womb. And I'm going to pay for it. And the church, meanwhile, doesn't recognize that the things driving the abortion movement, these are unclean powers. These are unclean spirits that God has called us. If we are not going to wreak havoc on Satan's kingdom, who's going to? If we are not going to threaten hell, doesn't it get you mad that it's now easier to get an abortion than it is to go buy a TV at Walmart? You go to Walmart, 
you're like, I want that TV. And they're like, oh, uh, well, first of all, it takes 30 minutes to get somebody to help you. And if you work at Walmart, where are you at? Y'all know what I'm saying. Y'all are always on break. Where are you guys at? Like, I'm over here, we want that TV. Oh, I don't know if that TV's in stock. 45 minutes later, I just want that TV. Well, I don't know, we have to check the back. I'm like, there's already three guys back there. I mean, what are you guys doing back there? And you, it takes an hour and a half to get them to bring you a TV. Go to Planned Parenthood. Within 10 minutes, they have you on a table. Oh, you want to murder your baby? We have no problem paying for that. These are demonic forces, specifically a demonic force at work in America. How do you know that, Isaiah? Because now we have a president who is okay with grown men twerking on children teaching in our schools. LA Zoo sells tickets from zero to two years old to their drag shows. And the zoo goes, we're going to have family-friendly drag night. I literally posted a video, a grown man dressed as a woman twerking on an infant in a car seat. And pre preachers don't talk, pastors don't talk. We don't even recognize there are forces at work that we are fighting an invisible battle. And if we don't start getting in this war, if we don't start declaring an end to Satan's reign, he will continue to manipulate. He will continue to control that this spirit I'm gonna talk about has seeped into government. Washington, if I didn't freak you out enough, let me freak you out more. And I know there's kids, so I'm gonna be you know calm but also I need to get my point across Washington is trying to pass a law where if your seven-year-old comes home let's just call him Sam and says daddy someone at school told me that I don't need to be a boy I want to be a girl now I want to change my name to Samantha and as a Christian if you don't let them get a sex change that is cut their reprodu reproductive organ off if you don't let them get on hormones and they go back to school and say my daddy won't let me become a girl then they can have a knock at CPS could be knocking at your door putting your kids into foster care they are taking our kids right from under our knows where are the biblical values that say devil this is not okay and we are going to fight a spiritual battle so we are fighting a battle and our battle is I'm just giving you examples and I'm going to show you this in scripture our battle is against unclean spirits now for those of you that are new I can tell you're new because you're grinning at me for those of you that are new unclean spirits are personalities Ephesians 6 we're not battling flesh and blood we're fighting persons that don't have bodies so demons that Jesus dealt with are unclean personalities. They are persons, real personalities, that are bodiless. They crave to live in a body. They are disembodied spirits. And so a spirit of addiction, they long to have a body to drink through. A spirit of lying longs to have a mouth to, to lie through. A spirit of lust longs to have eyeballs so it could watch pornography. So these unclean spirits, because we open up the door to them, they come into our house, Matthew chapter 12 and they live inside of us and because preachers are not willing to confront them preachers are not willing to talk about them we spend years and years and years thinking it's normal to have a voice telling us to kill ourselves I, I have pastor friends and I'm just going to be very vulnerable and very careful while I say this because this will end up on YouTube and they say yeah man I just have this thought of, of keep telling this thought keeps telling me to kill myself how are you, look at me, look at me, how are you a pastor and you're okay with a voice in your head telling you to take your life and some have, even friends of mine that were pastors have taken the, how are we okay with a voice when you walk in the room, a voice tells you everybody in here doesn't like you, everybody in here thinks you're disgusting, nobody likes you, you're never going to amount and you sit there and you hear that voice, meanwhile you come from church service to church service and we tell you all about your best life now but we never confront the unclean evil personalities that live inside of humans but the Bible says when Jesus showed up in Mark 1 Jesus confronted demonic spirits Jesus confronted demonic powers and I had to give you that intro because a spoonful of sugar helps some medicine go down to let you know that today I am going to confront an insidious a nefarious a vile spirit that the Lord told me yesterday has her hands around the throat of this generation. I am going to confront the spirit of Jezebel. There is a real spirit that is in the end times church that is ruining marriages, that is shutting down the move of God. And today God is looking for a Jehu that says, Jezebel, you will not ruin my marriage. You will not stop what God is doing. Today, if you give me 30 minutes, we're going to unmask Jezebel. 
Jezebel is one of the most common demonic spirits I deal with in deliverance. In fact, just a few weeks ago, I was doing deliverance on a very well-known, you'll see her on my channel soon, a very well-known astrologer. She taught New Age, tarot card reader. I can't even tell you the stuff she's teaching because it's dark, dark stuff. She recently got saved and has gotten deliverance, and I led her through a three-hour deliverance a few weeks ago, and the last demon to leave was that spirit of Jezebel. See, Jezebel is a master spirit. She doesn't just control one, but she controls many other spirits under her command. Well, what do you mean? I mean, in Matthew 12, Jesus said, when a spirit leaves a person, it goes and gets seven more spirits because demons work together in groups, seven more spirits, eviler than itself. And they all enter that person and the person is worse off than before. And then Jesus says, this will be that of this generation. In other words, not only is there now demonization in people, but there are spirits the devil has released on entire generations and now we have an entire generation where I have five-year-olds coming to my services saying they're addicted to pornography. Seven-year-old girl not long ago smashed her phone because she told her dad, I was sexting grown men. How are you seven and you even know what that is? I was at Starbucks, I don't know, a couple years ago. My stomach was turning. I'm sitting there at Starbucks reading my Bible and there's a bunch of young kids. They're probably seven to ten. Okay, and at seven to 10, I was at the skate park. They were at Starbucks and they were talking about the most sexual, vile things they were doing at school, behind the school. I was thinking in my mind, if the devil hasn't just vomited on this generation, and my question is, where are the Jeremiah's? Where are the Ezekiel's? Where are the Jehu's? Where are, I, I don't mind being the wild one. I know pastors are like, if I hand you the mic, I don't know what's gonna come out of you. I wanna be around some Jehu's that are wild, right? that say, I am not afraid. Come on, some of you men are soft. You need to man up and say, devil, not in this house. I'm going to show you why some of you men are soft. I'm going to teach you this. Jezebel, now I'm only going over notes for me because if I don't go over notes, I'll keep screaming repent for the next 30 minutes. I'll just keep yelling, so I have to get into this. This is a very common spirit, a master spirit, but let me give you some Bible here. She is mentioned over 20 times in Scripture, and you say, well, brother, she's just a dead queen. Although she is a dead queen, her spirit lives on even now, and I need you to realize that this is the spirit that is coming against the end-time church. If you don't know we're in the last days, I laugh because you should know that. If you don't know we're in the last days, we're in the last days. The Bible says now is the high time to wake up out of your slumber and to put on the armor of light. Why do we need the armor of light? Because dark days are ahead. Let me say that one more time. Everybody look at me. We are heading into dark territory and God is not looking for pansies. He's looking for prayer warriors. God is not looking for whiners or wimps. He's looking for spiritual snipers and warriors that are going to say, God, here I am. Send me. I'm not going to live my life warming a chair. I'm going to destroy hell's gates. She's mentioned 20 times. She's a spirit in people, yes. So a male or female can have a spirit of Jezebel. Again, she's a high-ranking master spirit, but she's also a principality that rules governments, governors, and leaders, and dictates and controls churches. I'm going to show you this in the Bible because you're looking at me weird. She's a spirit over regions and territories. Her primary goal is to infiltrate churches, infiltrate believers, and use her witchcraft, her mind games, and her control to quench the fire of God and ultimately end the move of God. And let me show you in the Bible, if you have notes, if you have a Bible, that'd be good because we're in church. Let me show you where she is at in Revelation chapter 2 verse 18. To give you context, John is writing to literal churches, but he's not just writing to churches. He's getting his message directly from Jesus. So this is actually Jesus directly talking to churches. And if you look at Revelation 2, the words are in red. If you're new, if it's in red, he said it, okay? Red means Jesus said it. So this is what Revelation 2 18 says. It says, write this letter to the church of Thyatira. This this is the message from the Son of God. So who's the message from? Jesus. Whose eyes are like flames of fire, whose feet are like polished bronze. He says, I know all the things that you do. If you just a little bit. I know all the things that you do. I've seen your love. I've seen your faith, your service, and your patience endurance. So, life song, we're doing good here. I mean, this looks like us here. We have love. We have faith. We have service. We have patient endurance. He says, and I've seen your constant improvement in all these things. But the story changes here because it says, but... A but's not good, by the way. God's like, you've done all of this, but you're kind of like, oh, I don't want to know what comes after the but. 
I have this complaint against you. You're permitting that woman, that Jezebel, who calls herself, come on, life song, that Jezebel, who calls herself a prophet to lead my servants astray. She teaches them. What does Jezebel do? She teaches. What does she teach? She teaches them to commit sexual sin and to eat food offered to idols. I gave her time to repent, but she does not want to turn away from her fornication. Therefore, I will throw her on a bed of suffering, and those that commit adultery with her will suffer great unless they repent and turn from their evil deeds. I will also strike her children dead. Jezebel has children. Then all the churches will know that I'm the one that searches out the thoughts of every person, and I will give each person what they deserve. You're get, you got this coming to you. If you're involved in Jezebel, pornography, lust, fornication, idolatry, and witchcraft, you have this coming to you. But I also have the message for the rest of you in Thyatira that have not followed the false teaching. I will ask nothing more of you than to hold tightly to what you have until you come. To all who are victorious, who obey me to the end, come on, this is the part to clap. I will give them authority over all nations, and they will rule the nations with an iron rod. They will have, look at what Jesus says, they will have the same authority that I receive from the Father and I will give them the morning star. So God says, I'm going to give you a choice today, Life Song. I'm going to give the church of Thyatira a choice. You either deal with Jezebel. You either get this spirit, this woman, this personality out of your life, remove this from you, or God says, I will remove you. So how serious is this sermon today? It's everything. You see, here's what you don't realize about pornography. Its flames are hotter than hell. Pornography will eat you alive, spit you out, and then drag you to hell after. The Bible says lust is like a trap, like a bird that can't escape a snare, and its destination is hell. If you let that thing grow, you will end up burning for a trillion years, and it'll be like the first day you got there. This is what we're talking about tonight, the spirit of control, the spirit of witchcraft, pornography, lust, depression, anxiety, all these things Jezebel does. This is no game. This is no joke. We are soldiers in the armies of God. I am coming to you not as some skinny 130-pound, half Hispanic, half Italian half chihuahua. I am coming as a general in God's army. I know, funny with serious, it'll work. I am coming to you as a general in the army of God, saying it's time to spit the pacifier out of your mouth. It's time to take the pamper off and say, I'm a soldier in the army of Almighty God. It's time for some of you men to get rid of the purse. Did I say that out loud? We have pastors out here carrying purses instead of swords. Jezebel's reference, first reference, was from 1 Kings 18 and 19. Let me tell you a little bit about her. She was married to Ahab. The word Jezebel means to be unmarried. So here she is supposed to be in covenant, supposed to be married, but she's really a covenant-breaking spirit. See, people that have the spirit of Jezebel, they can never keep anything. They can't keep a job. They can't keep a relationship. They're not steady. They're not stable. God is looking for us to make a covenant with him. A covenant is not a contract. A contract is I'll do 50% as long as you do 50%. A covenant is something you do at an altar when you get married. And really, when you get married, the reason why you're at an altar is because you're supposed to die to yourself. Hello, husbands. You're supposed to die to yourself. You're no longer arrogant, selfish, and bitter. And when you make the covenant with your wife, here's what you're saying. I'll do 100% and you do 100%. What's the difference between a contract and a covenant? There's no agreement to a covenant. It's I'm doing it. You might be the worst husband, the worst wife in history, but I made a covenant and I'm still going to show up 100%. I'm not going to show up 50% because you showed up 30% a covenant. So she is a covenant breaking spirit. She's vile. She's seductive. She's controlling. She's manipulating. She's deceiving. She's lustful. And she hates the altar of God. Jezebel hates deliverance. I had a pastor's wife a few months ago 
sit, tell me, I just have a testimony to share with you. I said, no problem. You know, she's a senior pastor's wife. And so you're going to give her time to share her testimony. She said, just a few months back, this was months before I talked to her. She said, I was getting ready to leave my husband. We have a large church. And when I say large, I mean over a thousand people. She said, we have a large church, very successful. I'm the senior pastor's wife. She said, but I begin to talk to a guy online. It was innocent at first. It was nothing sexual. It was nothing crossing boundaries, but we were flirt. Well, it was crossing boundaries because she was talking to him. She said, I got to a place where he convinced me to leave my husband and come be with him. She said, I was a day away from leaving my husband and going and being with this random guy I met online. She said, but my family and friends, as a last ditch effort to save the church and save the marriage, came over my house, opened up a laptop, and played a video from two years ago by a guy named Isaiah Saldivar. The, the video was j uh, uncovering, exposing Jezebel. She said, as I watch your two-year-old YouTube video about Jezebel, something began to talk out of me. Something began to surface. This is a girl who's been hearing preaching her whole life, y'all. Are y'all catching this? She says, something began to speak out of me, and I was completely delivered from the spirit of Jezebel, and that spirit was trying to destroy her church. That spirit tried to destroy her marriage, and so today, Jezebel, we know you're in here, and we're on to you. Now, I know many of you have never been to a service like this. If your heart is racing, it's not you. If you feel sick in your stomach right now, some people are getting up and leaving because they can't handle it, and that's totally fine. If you feel something turning in your stomach, if you're mad, think about what you're mad at. You're mad that I just read the Bible. Marcella, I just read the Bible. That's all I've done. And you're mad, so you have to think, why is there something in me getting mad? See, when people start manifesting, it's often, first off, with them being angry, with them not being able to stand preaching, with them feeling sick to their stomach. The reason why you're feeling sick and angry and there's something turning is because that thing that you've allowed to live in you rent-free for so many years is getting a Holy Ghost eviction notice. We're not giving Jezebel a 30-day notice. We're not giving Jezebel a two-week notice. I am saying today, in about 20 minutes, every spirit of Jezebel is going to come up and out in Jesus' name. Come on, do I have a Jehu in the house that says, Jezebel, not today. She's vile. She's seductive. And you might say, well, it sounds powerful that she's pouring out upon the church. The devil is pouring the spirit of Jezebel out on the church. But I'll tell you, God always has an answer. And God says, as the devil pours out the spirit of Jezebel, so I, the Lord, am pouring out the spirit of Jehu. That same anointing that Jehu walked in, God is pouring out. So let me give you. Now, there's a prize. Some of you are like, ooh, I like prizes. There's a prize if you overcome this spirit. If you overcome the spirit of Jezebel, you are rewarded by first the morning star, which Revelation 22 tells us that is Jesus. And you're also rewarded with the same authority that the Father gave Jesus, he now gives you. Remember, Jesus says the power and the authority that the Father has given me, all power and authority, I now confer upon you. That is why in Matthew 10, they cast out devils. Luke 10, they cast out devils. And then Mark 16, 17 says those that believe Believe, they shall drive out demons. So it's not maybe if, but, and. It's they shall drive out demons. If you are a believer, come on, help me, Holy Ghost. I'm tired. If you are a believer, you have the power and you have the authority to drive out demons. If you're taking notes, I'm going to give you some quickly characteristics of a spirit of Jezebel. Number one, the spirit of Jezebel has children. See, most people don't realize that in Revelation, God says, I will strike her children dead. There is a principle that the devil understands the church has still failed to understand. If you look at the greatest Old Testament deliverer, his name was Moses. He was the greatest man to ever live in the Old Testament to deliver the people of God. We know that he brought the people out of bondage. Well, the interesting thing was when Moses was born... Some way, somehow, the devil knew that there was a deliverer being raised up in that generation. See, in every generation, God will raise up a deliverer to respond to the bondage that the people have found themselves in. How many know we found ourselves in some bondage in the American church? And so Moses raises up, and Pharaoh says, to counteract Moses, he says, the firstborn male of all Egypt have to be killed. And so there was a woman who said, I'm not going to allow this to happen. Moses has something special 
special on him. Moses is going to be a deliverer. And she put him in that little basket and sent him down the Nile, and Moses survived. Fast forward to the New Testament. The greatest deliverer to ever walk the earth was about to be born. His name was Jesus. This was the carpenter from Nazareth, fully man and fully God. This was God wrapped in flesh. What happened when Jesus showed up? There was a man named Herod that says, I know there's a deliverer somewhere in this generation. And so every male boy has to be killed. Why? Because the devil knows if I can kill something and in, in its infancy, I won't have to deal with it in its maturity. That's why when you first get saved, if you could just last a year, statistically, you'll never end up going back to the world. It's that infancy the devil pounces on you. See, what Jesus is displaying here is that you have to deal with Jezebel's children because if you don't deal with that lust in its infancy stage, the longer you give way to the spirit, the longer you allow Jezebel to live inside of you or around you, the stronger Jezebel becomes. And I know this because doing deliverance on a 70-year-old that has Jezebel is much harder than a 16-year-old that has Jezebel. I dealt with a lady. She was in her mid-70s, spirit of Jezebel, destroyed her whole life. How have I been living with this thing for 70 years in church? Because the church is not willing to confront the works of darkness. Friend, if the world is bold about darkness, it's time that the church starts exposing. And if you don't deal today, if you don't kill lust in its infancy stage, if you don't kill hatred in its infancy stage, if you don't kill control, discouragement, witchcraft in its infancy stage, when she grows to maturity, you won't be able to deal with her. So deal with Jezebel. Luke chapter 1, 800 years. I'm just proving to you this is biblical. 800 years after Jezebel has died. The Bible says John the Baptist came in the spirit of Elijah. Here's what happened. John the Baptist began to preach against Herod. Herod at the time was living in sin. He was sleeping with his sister's wife and committing sexual immorality. John the Baptist does what I'm doing today, publicly attacks that immoral spirit, and the, John the Baptist is thrown into prison. The king ends up getting his own daughter which is so twisted and demonic to dance sexually for him it pleasured the king that the king Herod said you can have anything you want even up to half of the kingdom the daughter goes to the mom and says what should we ask for and the mom who's functioning 800 years later the spirit Jezebel's dead but that spirit's still alive and that Jezebel spirit says give us the head of John the Baptist see Jezebel still is after the man that has the spirit of Elijah. Remember, Jezebel wanted to kill Elijah, and now John the Baptist comes, and Jezebel, 800 years later, is still working. Jezebel has children, and Jezebel hates prophets, preachers, pastors, and anybody that has the spirit of Elijah. Number two, Jezebel does not mind powerful preaching as long as it's never applied. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jezebel loves Sunday mornings. She's in here. She loves preaching. She doesn't mind you listening to me. She doesn't mind you shouting. She doesn't mind you dancing as long as you don't change. As long as you hear the preaching, but you go back to drinking. How do you know? Because we know that Ahab, who's Jezebel's husband, used to listen to Elijah's preaching. And in fact, the Bible says at one place, Ahab repented but did not walk with the Lord. And so Ahab would come to hear Elijah preach. The moment he left the preaching, he'd go right back to his sexual sin and not only that Herod would actually go down and listen to John the Baptist preach in prison and Herod liked the preaching but Herod wasn't changed Jezebel spirits will get you to love the preaching but she'll never let you change if you're in this room and you've been listening to sermon after sermon but you're not changing your lifestyle it's likely Jezebel's on board Number three, Jezebel is a manipulative spirit and she loves to control. First Kings chapter 21 verse 25 says there was never anyone like Ahab who committed himself to doing what was displeasing the Lord at the instigation or at the command of his wife Jezebel. Ahab was a jellyfish, no backbone leader that ultimately was a puppet for Jezebel. Jezebel was a controller and this is what Jezebel does. She's always in control. It's her. Some of y'all are like, I think I might know Jezebel. It's always up to her. She's the one running the shots and she will weasel her way into leadership to shut down the move of God. 
I have pastors I come and do revival for, and we have deliverance service, amazing moves of God. And then a month later, the pastor calls me. And remember, Jezebel could be in males or females. And the pastor says, Isaiah, we had a great move of God. It died out because my associate or one of my pastors or one of the leaders started saying, maybe we shouldn't have prayer meetings that long. Maybe we shouldn't have deliverance. Maybe we shouldn't allow new people to see. Maybe we shouldn't have altar calls like that. We got to get them in, get them out. See that Jezebel spirit worms her way into leadership and she teaches the prophets to commit sexual immorality. Jezebel is a spirit of witchcraft, which ultimately witchcraft is all connected to control. Jezebel, number four, hates authority. We are seeing an epidemic right now in America where young people hate authority. When I was raised, I got taught that you have utmost respect for law enforcement and for military. If you see a police officer, you respect them. Doesn't matter if you like them or not, you respect them. If you see a military person, you respect them. You pay for their meal if they're behind you in and out. We have a high level of respect. Even though we don't like the government at times, we have a high level of respect. We are living in a generation where authority has been attacked because Jezebel's running culture. Go drive a police car. And I have friends that are out here in Stockton PD. Drive down one of these neighborhoods. There are some neighborhoods out here in Stockton where five-year-olds will run out of the house, pick up rocks, and throw rocks at cop cars while yelling F you to the police. There is an entire generation that wants to defund the police, that hates authority, that hates law enforcement. And that same spirit has entered into the church. And now you get mad when I preach this message going, who do you think you are I hate authority friend it's Jezebel at work Jezebel some of you women you don't know how to submit to your godly husband because you have a Jezebel spirit some of you men don't know how to submit to your pastor because you have a Jezebel spirit and quite frankly some of you men are soft and you're like Ahab you have no backbone and you've allowed your wife to cause you to sin no, honey, we're not watching that movie in this house. There was a story I told in the last service of a friend of mine had a guy come into his office and say, my five-year-old daughter has randomly been saying the most sexual things to my friends. These guys are in their 30s and 40s. He's like, my friends come over and my five-year-old is randomly saying things she doesn't even know about, stuff that a five-year-old should never know. And she's randomly saying things that she, I don't know where, where this came from. And the pastor, the one that told me the story, looked the guy in the eye and said, you've been watching pornography haven't you turned white as a ghost and he said what you've been doing is at nighttime you've been watching pornography in your office and the guy said yeah I have been he said and you opened up a spiritual portal and that spirit of lust that spirit of Jezebel came out of your computer screen jumped onto your five-year-old and now your family is being demonized because you opened a door I hear God saying I am raising up men that are not going to open doors in their house but are going to close the doors I came to preach to every man and say close every door in Jesus name some of you men need to get a backbone and say I'm gonna go to battle this ain't no UFC your life is at stake Jezebel is a spirit of control Number five, Jezebel is a lustful spirit. She's incredibly seductive. She's incredibly sexual. Let me show you this, and this will send chills down your back. Revelation says that she was given a window to repent of her fornication. Fornication is the Greek word pornea, which is where the word pornography comes from. Jesus is telling John on an island. Everyone look at me. Je they'll take care of it. It's no big deal. Jesus is telling John on an island there is a spirit of pornea that is going to come against the end time church. And friend, we are are living in the time where the spirit of pornography has put our generation in bondage. Look at this. Let me show you some of these. One in five phone searches are pornographic searches. Pornography, listen to this, is a $100 billion industry. It brings in more money annually than the NFL, the NHL, the NBA, and the MLB combined. Over 40 million Americans regularly watch pornography. 28,000 users every second. 71% of teenagers hide their online behavior from their parents. 70% of men from age 18 to 24 watch pornography weekly. And you know right now, there are many of you in this church, male and female, that are addicted to internet pornography, that can't get off of it like heroin. You withdraw every time you don't watch it. And today, God is saying, I'm going to deliver you from the spirit of Jezebel. Look at what Ecclesiastes, look at this. 
Ecclesiastes 7.26. Everybody look at me and listen. Ecclesiastes 7.26. I discovered that a seductive woman is a trap more bitter than death. Her passion is a snare. Look at this. And her soft hands are chains. And those who are pleasing to God will escape her, but sinners will be caught in her snare. Friend, when Jezebel comes, she shuts your spiritual eyes. When Jezebel shows up lust, it gets you hiding in caves. But God is saying it's time, man of God, it's time, women of God, to break free from lust. And I declare the spirit of lust out in Jesus' name. Jezebel, come out in Jesus' name. We're almost done. Number six, number six, Jezebel. Some of y'all are like, I for sure have this spirit. Jezebel brings discouragement and brings depression. What did she do to Elijah? Elijah had his greatest victory ever. He called down the fire of God on Mount Carmel. And then in the next few chapters, he's sitting under a tree saying, God, will you kill me? And he's suicidal. All because, this is interesting, Jezebel and Elijah never one time met in person, ever. There's not one scripture that says Jezebel and Elijah met. He's running for his life because she gave a word to a servant and the servant came and said, by this time tomorrow, I'll have you killed. And that word had so much witchcraft power that it led the greatest prophet at the time running from his life, hiding under a tree. And here's the sad reality. Ultimately, Jezebel won over Elijah. Elijah will never perform another miracle. Elijah will never do another exploit. In fact, Jezebel's word to Elijah would be his downfall. And ultimately, he would have to go anoint Elisha, and then God would take him in a chariot of fire. Jezebel destroys boldness. She destroys confidence. She destroys courage. And she brings depression. But today, God is saying, I'm setting you free from discouragement. I'm setting you free from depression. I'm setting you, come on, where are the Elijahs at? They say, we are not going to run from from Jezebel, we're going to run to Jezebel and confront her today. Jezebel, number seven, gives you the spirit of fear. The Bible says God has not given you the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Fear is a spirit, and Jezebel makes you afraid of everything. Constantly afraid of getting in a car accident. Constantly afraid of being rejected. Constantly afraid of my future. Constantly afraid of my marriage failing. The fear is so gripping, and Jezebel is working. But God is saying, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. God will give you a new heart and a new mind. The Bible says in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 4, For when Jezebel destroyed the prophets of the Lord, Obadiah took a hundred prophets and hid them in 50 caves and provided them with bread and water. The prophets were hiding because of Jezebel, but the Lord is saying prophetically to this church and this generation, the prophets are coming out of hiding. It's time to, to raise your voice. It's time to prophesy, man of God. It's time to prophesy, woman of God. Number eight, we're almost done. Can I get someone on the keys? Thank you. Number eight is Jezebel destroys the altar. The Bible says when Jezebel became queen, she went and destroyed the altars of God. Jezebel will destroy the altar in your home. You will no longer have a prayer life. The altar speaks of worship. The altar speaks of prayer. And when Jezebel's around, she won't let you come to the altar. When Jezebel's in a church, there is no altar calls. There is no move of God. Jezebel is an altar-killing spirit. And the Bible says she took the altars of God and destroyed them and set up the altars of Baal. When you're on your phone watching porn, you are now worshiping at the altar of Baal. When you're doing things ungodly, you're worshiping at the altars of Baal. Number nine, and my last point before we kick Jezebel off the balcony today. If you didn't know what we're doing, that's what we're doing. Some of you are going to get delivered, and some of you are going to see deliverance for your first time. But the, no matter what happens today, Jezebel's losing. Number nine, I know there's kids, so I'll be safe. Jezebel spiritually castrates. Young boys now say, mom and dad, I don't want to be Sam, I want to be Samantha. And Washington says, if you don't let them chop off their reproductive organ, then you're now considered unfit and they go into foster care. There's a whole movement telling young boys, chop it off so you can be a girl. 
Jezebel would capture the, the people and she would make them eunuchs. That means she would castrate them. She would remove their reproductive organ. We are seeing a trend where men want to remove their reproductive organ and wear makeup. That's Jezebel in culture. That's Jezebel at work. And the church is sound asleep blind to what the devil's doing in culture. Jezebel would make people eunuchs. They would never be able to reproduce again. They would never be able to be fruitful. And ultimately, they would become castrated. But here's what the Bible says. Everybody stand to their feet if you can, please. But we're going to pray. The Bible says this, that Elisha anointed a man named Jehu. I'm like Jehu, y'all. Jehu was a wild rider. He wasn't fit. He didn't care. He said it what it was, and he confronted unclean demonic princes and princesses and kings and queens. I want to be like Jehu, not Elijah. Elijah was afraid and ran from Jezebel. Jehu, the Bible says this. The Bible says Je Jehu rode up to the balcony of Jezebel as she was in her palace, and Jezebel was surrounded, look at this, by three eunuchs, the men that Jezebel chopped their thingalings off. Those men were surrounding Jezebel. Jezebel was on her balcony putting on makeup. The Bible says painting her face. Sounds like a drag queen. Jezebel was painting her face. And Jehu fearlessly comes and he asks the four people on the balcony one question. This was the question Jehu asked. And this is the question I'm going to ask you. He said this, who is on the Lord's side? Who is on the Lord's side? I love this. When, when, Eli, when Jehu said that, these men that had been castrated had been feminized and had been controlled by Jezebel, something came alive inside of them. Something about them said, wait a minute, I'm a man. I've been castrated, I've been feminized, I've been called to fight. And the Bible says this, the three eunuchs picked up Jezebel and threw her off the balcony. And now this is intense, but if you read the Old Testament, you don't even need to go to the movies because the Old Testament, go there, has some crazy stuff. It says the blood of Jezebel splattered all over the walls and all over... Jehu's horses. And Jehu trampled Jezebel's blood under his feet. Understand that Elijah let Jezebel trample him under feet. But Jehu said, I am trampling Jezebel. And today, God is saying, it's time to trample on Jezebel. Prayer team, just line up, line up, line up. We have time this service. There are some of you in this room. Your heart is racing, you're sick to your stomach because Jezebel's mad, for real. You might say, well, I can never have a demon, says every single person I do deliverance on. Friend, we're out here doing deliverance on doctors, nurses, pastors, politicians, leaders, celebrities. These are not just, and we are doing deliverance on third age, witches, warlocks. I did deliverance on an ex-witch the other day, or she was a witch, now she's an ex-witch. So yes, we're doing that. But understand, oftentimes people that are being delivered are normal people that have these personalities living in them. If you know that you have a spirit of Jezebel, and I'm just going to warn you guys, in about five minutes, there will be people screaming on the top of their lungs at this altar. Acts chapter 8 says they were screaming as the demons left them. It's beautiful when demons scream out of a person. There are people in this room that need deliverance from a real spirit of Jezebel. There's others. Jezebel has been after you at work, at school, at your job. I get DMs all the time. And you know where I go? That's Jezebel. Women come up to me. I don't know what it is. Some of y'all 40 year old ladies, I don't know why you like me so much. It's like the mid forties, they come up, they're like, oh brother, I just want some ministry. Can I have your number? No, no Jezebel, you could have my wife's number. I'm like, you smell like a Jezebel. For real. I encounter Jezebel all the time. When I'm doing deliverance, Jezebel manifests. We're going to kill you. We're going to destroy you. I'm like, they, Jezebel's been saying that for 12 years. I, I need somebody to help me right here. I will not let Jezebel ruin me, kill me, cause me to run. Come on, Jehu. Knock her off the balcony in Jesus' name. So we're going to knock her off the balcony. So for some, you need literal, she's living in you. Remember, demons always live in us. They never live on us. So this like, oh, it's just on me. No, it's not. It's in you. Jezebel's in you. We're going to cast her out of you in Jesus' mighty name. For some of you, there's a Jezebel at school at work, and I'm going to pray for you, and God's going to cut them off. Watch. Watch. You get back to work, and that girl you've been flirting with got fired. Sorry, not sorry. 
Some of y'all think it's, it's just her child. It's just a kid. No, it's, it's Jezebel's children. It's small, but it's not. It'll ruin your marriage. So I'm going to pray for those of you that don't need deliverance from that spirit, but that spirit's been after you your whole life. If you need deliverance from that spirit, come to the altar right now. Those that need it, you're like, it's in me. Come up, come up, come up right now. Come on. Find a prayer team right now. Don't even wait till I start praying. I want you guys to make sure you're targeting Jezebel. Okay, don't just say, oh, I have, just come on, let's target Jezebel. Oh yeah, she's for sure about to get cast out. I can feel it right now. She's about to get whooped up right off the balcony. We are not afraid, and we're not going to apologize at this church for doing the things the Bible says we should do. I will not apologize for deliverance. It's in the Bible. Jesus did it everywhere. I'm his follower. I'm his ambassador. It's my job, too. For the rest of you, and again, we need one-on-one, all hands on deck. If you're not a prayer leader, please don't pray. If you're a visitor, please let the prayer team pray. But I need to make sure the prayer team that you, you don't spend too much time because there's a lot of people to pray for. For the rest of you, let me pray for you. Just extend your hands out or up. Right now, in Jesus' name, I come against every, watch, people are going to start manifesting. I come against every spirit of Jezebel now. Jezebel, we, we know you're there. Come up. Come up and face me, Jezebel. It's time to leave in Jesus' name. These people are not your home. You will not have life song church. This place is not your home. I bind every Jezebel spirit right now. I bind you, Jezebel. You have no power. Come out. Come out. There it is. There she is. There she is. Come out. There, make yourself known. We're not afraid of you. We're going to face you today, Jezebel. I bind that spirit right now. Come out. And guys, she's very stubborn. She's going to tell you no. She's very stubborn. It's okay. Keep telling her you're the one in control. Don't let her tell you no. You're in control. Come out now. I command every spirit of Jezebel to leave in Jesus' name. I command you up and out in Jesus' name. Every curse of Jezebel, every generational curse, we bind you in Jesus' name. The blood is against you. Come out. Come out. Come out, you evil queen. Come out in Jesus' name. Lust, control, discouragement. She causes all of these things. Go now. Go now. Go now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come up and out right now. In Jesus' name. Some of you are getting delivered in the crowd. I see you right now. Just let her come out of you. She's going to come right out of your mouth. She's going to come right out of your mouth. Let her scream out. It's fine. She's going to scream right out of you. It's Jezebel. She throws a tantrum. Go. 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 Come out, Jezebel. We bind you in Jesus' name. We bind you in Jesus' name. The blood is against you. I plead the blood against every spirit of Jezebel. Lord, expose this right now. God, expose this. Lord, we don't want to be like the church in Thyatira. We don't want to be like the church. Jezebel, we will not tolerate your fornication. We will not tolerate you, Jezebel. Come on, throw out pornography. I hear the Lord saying, some of you need to smash your laptop. Some of you need to smash your iPhone. If your hand caused you to sin, chop it off. Some of you guys down here, get rid of your Instagram. Get rid of your TikTok. Get rid of your porn sites. Get rid of them in Jesus' name. Jezebel loves pornography. We will, we will not tolerate pornography in this church. We will not tolerate pornography in this church. Pornia. That's that Greek word. Come on, Jezebel's leaving people all over this altar. Let it out. Let her go. Jezebel, we don't want you. Jezebel, we don't want you. We're not your home. Let us go. We're not your home. Let us go. We're not your home. Let us go. 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 There it is. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. This is just like the book of Acts. 
This is just like the book of Acts. Jezebel, you must go. We cast you out of our marriage. We cast you out of our job. We cast you out of our family. Get out of our life. Out of their mouth into the abyss in Jesus' name. Come right up through their throat and out of their mouth now. Go. Go. Go in Jesus' name. Prayer team, we have a lot of people to pray for. Make sure that you move on to the next one when you, when you can. Lord, free us. God, if we're like Thyatira, forgive us, Lord. We will not tolerate Jezebel. The church just tolerated her. The church just tolerated her. We will not tolerate Jezebel in this church. Lord, I pray you'd give us the morning star. Give us the authority that you had, Jesus. Jezebel, you must go right now. Jezebel, you must go right now. You will not tell us no. You will leave now in Jesus' name. We bind you. There it is. Come out. It's leaving you right now. It's leaving you right now. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out. It's leaving. Come out, Jezebel. Yes. 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 Out in Jesus' name. Out. Come out, Jezebel. Go. Yep, that's her. Come out. Come out. She always sounds the same when she comes out. Come out, Jezebel, you foul spirit. Come out, Jezebel, you foul spirit. Loose this woman of God. Out. Out in Jesus' name. Loose her. There it is. Go. Go. Out. 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 Go. Go, you wicked spirit. Come out, Jezebel. Come out, Jezebel. You've been defeated. Come out. You've been defeated. Come out.